say here in Harambe Twin Day, which means let's go. Jumbo friends, my name is Rich and I'll be your safari guide through the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. We are moving trucks, so I ask that everyone remain seated at all times. Keep those hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. If you have any cameras or phones, keep them handy. I do uh, suggest setting them to a sports or an action setting, because we will be able to stop some of the animals, just not at all of them. If anyone has small lap children, keep them firmly planted in your lap or in the seat beside you. This is a safari, not lion king, so please do not raise your children high into the air for any reason. Our first stop here is the Little Echeri Forest. The creatures rely on that thick underbrush as a form of protection and also as a source of food. Over here to our right side, we have some okapis. The okapis have white stripes on their hind quarters, but they're not related to zebras. They are very closely related to giraffes. They have similar facial features and a very long tongue that will wrap around branches and twigs to strip those leaves clean off. The okapis are very shy creatures. And, uh, they are uh, easily start startled. They will hide out in the bushes around them. And then over here to our right side as well, and our left side, we have some bongos. Bongos are the largest forest antelopes, reaching up to about 900 pounds. They are also known as the ghosts of the forest because of their dark colors help them camouflage very well with their surroundings. Both males and females of the bongos have horns. The males get darker in color as they get older. Now coming up on our left side, we have some saddle-billed storks. We've got one in the water and one near the water. The saddle-billed storks get their name for that yellow saddle shape that appears on their bills. They can stand up to five feet tall and have a wingspan of about nine feet in length. The males have dark brown eyes, the females have bright yellow eyes, and they will mate for life. As we come out of the forest, we are now entering into the Safi River. The creatures in the river depend on the water as a form of protection and also as a source of food. So keep those eyes peeled. You never know when you might see a hippo come up for a breath of fresh air, and that's because hippos can hold their breath for up to about 20 minutes at a time. They're very large land animals. They get up to about 5,000 pounds. But they will stay submerged in the water. It helps keep them cool throughout the day. I see a hippo over here to our left side, just under the water there. Looks like it might be coming up for some air. Now, hippos will move through the water by uh, running or trotting on the river bottoms. It gives them the appearance of swimming, but hippos do not swim. We've got a couple more coming up here on that left side. 
Now hippos have extremely large teeth, but they are herbivores. They will graze on grasses and small plants along the riverbanks. <laughs> they don't eat a lot of food in connection with their body sizes. On average, they'll only eat about 80 to 90 pounds of vegetation per day. If anything happens to get a little too close to those crocodiles, they are really snappy. They have a bite strength of about 2,000 pounds per square inch. about one full meal per week, but they have been known to go months without food. Other crocodiles are very attentive to her young. Once her eggs start to hatch, she will very gently roll them in her mouth. As we come out of the river, we are now entering into the savannah. The savannah is home to some amazing creatures. You might be familiar with some of them, like the giraffe, the elephant, the zebra, and the lion. And of course, many more creatures as well. Now we can't guarantee that we're going to see all the animals today, and that's because they are free roaming, which means that we give them the ability to go where they want, when they want, in their respective areas. Many of them will be out in the open. Occasionally some will hide out in the bushes. And sometimes due to sleeping patterns and or migration, some of these animals will uh, go missing altogether. Hopefully we'll see as many creatures as possible. Now we have a giraffe out here to that right side. The giraffe that we have here are Maasai giraffe. Maasai giraffe are known for their rough, irregular patterns, whereas reticulated giraffes have those cleaner, crisp lines and those cleaner, crisp patterns. Got some mounds around us sticking up out of the ground. These are termite mounds, really tall one over here to our left, some shorter ones around us. Termite mounds made by termites with a collection of their saliva, dirt, and mud. They are rock solid. So animals have been known to rub up against them to get that itch that they can't get themselves. And each one of these termite mounds, of course, depending on size, can house up to several million termites. One, one thing that giraffes and humans have in common are seven neck vertebrae. So we have the same number of neck bones. And being the tallest animals, it makes sense that these uh, giraffes have very tall children. On average, a baby giraffe could be six feet tall when first born. They can stand within the first 15 minutes of life and start walking and running within the first hour. Over here to our right side, we have some smaller antelopes, little tan tops out there. Those are springboks. Springbok get their name for their ability to jump or to spring up into the air up to six feet from a standstill. They're very fast creatures. If startled or frightened, they can take off at speeds of up to about 50 to 60 miles an hour and can spring forward or leap forward up to about 13 feet while running at those higher speeds. Now straight out ahead of us, Near these taller grasses, we have some Ancoli cattle. Their horns can get up to about six feet in length. Their horns are not very heavy. Each one weighs about 15 to 20 pounds, and that's because they're not solid. On the inside of their horns, the honeycomb-like structure acts as a cooling system, helps circulate their blood flow, and keeps them cool on hot days. Also out there towards our right side, next to those tall grasses out there, we have some elands. Elands are the largest species of antelope, getting up to about one to 2,000 pounds. A couple more giraffes out here towards that right side, along with some wildebeest. Wildebeest are known for migrating. They can migrate anywhere between 500 and 1,000 miles every year. Giraffes don't require a lot of sleep. On average, they'll only sleep for about 30 minutes per day. They will sleep standing up and sitting down, but never laying down. And they'll usually, usually only sleep in increments of about one to two minutes at a time. We've got some of those wildebeest out here to that right side as well. Now, when wildebeest sleep or rest, they'll usually do so in rows or groups, often facing opposite direction of each other. Helps them be a little bit more aware of their surroundings. vessels on the backs of their ears, so flapping them helps cool that blood down as it circulates throughout the rest of their body. The elephants, they don't have very many natural predators, so their main threat are humans poaching them or their ivory tusks. A couple more of those beside giraffe up here to that left side of ours. Now 
As we come around this next turn, take a look over to your left side. We have some greater flamingos. The greater flamingos are the largest species of flamingo. They are also the lightest in pink. They get their pink colors from a diet high of carotene, which is found in the brine shrimp and the other small water creatures that they eat. The Ancoli cattle, they are a uh, species of cow. They will communicate with each other uh, through mooing. A little is known as the white flamingos will balance out on one leg. I like to think they're a little bit more comfortable on one leg than they are on two legs. this next turn over to our left side we have some white rhinos white rhinos are larger than black rhinos they can get up to about 5,000 pounds their horns are made of keratin which is the same material as our fingernails not to be confused with keratine which is what makes the flamingos pink they'll rub up against uh, stuff to get those itches on their legs or on their uh, their rumps we got a little baby one out here to that left side as well and then all the way up the hill, just past that fallen log up there, we have some cheetah. Cheetah are the fastest land animals, reach speeds of up to 60 miles an hour. Zero to 60 in about three seconds, that is faster than this truck. The cheetahs will hunt primarily during the day, unlike other large cat species. So we got a couple more cheetah over here to our left. Got a few of them out in the open, actually. This one uh, right in the center, and one up just past some of those trees. And one of the defining features on the cheetah are the, is the black teardrop that runs from their eye down the length of their face. It helps reflect the sun out of their out of their face during those very bright days. Kind of like a natural pair of sunglasses. Rhinos tucked out behind some of those bushes there. Another little baby one. And just behind some of these rocks over here on our right side, we have a Bontabok. Bontaboks are known for their beautiful chestnut coats. They have been hunted near extinction, so you won't find very many of them out in the wild. But they are protected on reserves like this around the world. Now, as we learn about the animals here on the reserve, it gives us opportunities to help them, not only here, but also out in the, uh, the wild. Recently, our conservation researchers have discovered that elephants are afraid of the sound of bees. If they hear that buzzing sound, they will alert the other elephants around them to steer them away from any potential danger. And because of this information, we've been able to help farmers out in Kenya. They've been able to place beehives around their crop as a natural barrier. It keeps those elephants out from destroying the crops, eating anything that might make them sick, and then limiting that connection time between uh, elephants and humans. But then those farmers are able to harvest the honey as an additional resource that they can use for food to sell at their local villages to help out their local economy. Now as we come around this next turn, take a look over to our left side. We have some cheetahs out here on the right. They are the largest and fastest land animals. They can get up to 60 miles an hour. They are the fastest land animals. They can get up to 60 miles an hour. They are the fastest land animals. They can get up to 60 miles an hour. If I have any wilderness explorers on board, you are on Simba 1. That is S-I-M-B-A-1. You'll need to know that to get your badge. And one of the phrases that we like to use here in Harambe is Kwaharini, which does translate to go well.